Find a vector function that describes the curve of intersection of the cylinder given by x squared plus y squared equals 4 and the plane given by x plus y plus 2z equals 4. So this is what we're doing here. We have two surfaces. One surface is a cylinder. Let's go ahead and plot that cylinder in an x, y, z coordinate system. Since no value of z appears in this first function, we know that this first function is going to be a cylinder whose x, y trace is going to be a circle. So using that equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, I know that the cylinder is, ha is a circle in the xy plane of radius 2. And I'll just go ahead and sketch the cylinder. So this cylinder is given by x squared plus y squared equals to 4. Now we also have a plane. The plane is given by the equation x plus y plus 2z is equal to 4. Remember, a vector normal to the plane is given by the coefficients in front of the variables. So the coefficients are 1, 1, and 2. This would be the components of the normal vector that is perpendicular to the plane. To sketch a plane, I'm just going to pick a few points. And, and these points are going to be the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the z-intercept of this plane. For example, to find the x-intercept of our plane, we are going to set y and z equal to 0. This would mean x equals 4 from our plane's equation. To find the y-intercept for our plane, we would take the x plus y plus 2z equation, and we're going to set x equal to 0 and z equals to 0 from that equation. We would end up with y equals 4. And for the z-intercept of our plane, we are setting x equals to 0 and y equals to 0, we end up with 2z equals 4, which is z equals to 2. Let's add that to our graph. Adding it to our graph, I see that we are coming out to a y-intercept of 4 on the y-axis. Here is one point on our plane. We have x equals to 4, so I see I'm going to have to make a longer x-axis. Let's go ahead and do that. Here is 4 on the x-axis. So x is equal to 4, puts us right here. And then now we have z is equal to 2. z equals to 2 puts us at right about here. Now I'm going to use these points to do basically a triangle that represents our plane. So there's a triangle that represents our plane. That plane intersects the cylinder. Let's go ahead and take that triangle and expand it so we could have a better sense for what our plane looks like. I'm going to just draw our plane looking something like this. And now that I've drawn that, I'm going to get rid of some of our lines for clarity. OK, so there's our plane. Now, our plane intersects the cylinder. And where it intersects the cylinder is going to produce a line of intersection. Let's look at what the line of intersection probably looks like. So imagine you're taking a tube and you're cutting it at an angle with some scissors. So your line of intersection will probably look something very similar to 
this. Okay, and let me get rid of one of these lines for perspective. Okay, so our line of intersection looks like it's an ellipse that is off at some angle. So that ellipse describes where the cylinder meets the plane. So when we are looking for the curve of intersection, we are looking for this function. And I'm guessing this function is going to be elliptical, just off at some weird angle. So the equation that we end up with may not look like a standard equation of an ellipse because this is a three-dimensional ellipse as opposed to two-dimensional ellipses that we've worked with before. So the question then becomes, how do we determine that curve of intersection? Well, we're given two equations. The equation of the cylinder and the equation of the plane. The curve is constrained by the cylinder. So what this means is that where we are on the plane depends on the surface of the cylinder. So the cylinder constrains the line of intersection. Well, this occurs when these two functions are equal to each other. So I see that x squared plus y squared equals 4. I also see that x plus y plus 2z equals to 4. If we set these two equal to each other, this provides our constraint. So somehow we may be able to use this information, but right now we have too many variables. Our goal to find that curve of intersection, let's go ahead and find a parameterized vector function. So let's look for a function of t for the x component, another function of t for the y component, and another function of t for the z component. So in other words, we want to reduce the number of variables down from 3 down to 1. We want to reduce x, y, and z, and if we can express them in terms of t, then we could come up with our vector function that describes this curve of intersection. To come up with this vector function, let's look at our cylinder. Our cylinder is given by x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Can you think of a way to parameterize x and y so that we're dealing with a function of a single variable? Well, let's look at this. In, in the xy plane. If we look at this in the xy plane, we know this is a circle of radius 2. Well, we could parameterize this in the xy plane. If we had, let's say, an angle of t being our angle, you know the x-coordinate is given by x equals 2 cosine of t, and you know the y-coordinate is given by 2 sine of t. So we are able to parameterize this circle. The parameterization would give us a x component of 2 cosine of t. This is what x has to be to lie on the cylinder. We can't have any other value of x because we wouldn't be on the cylinder. Also, we can't have any other value of y because otherwise we wouldn't lie on the cylinder. The cylinder constrains where in the plane we can be. So we know what x has to be. 
We know what y has to be. Now we have to determine z. So to determine z, let's look at what we have here. We have this equation that we got by equating the two surfaces together, by equating the plane to the cylinder, we have a constraint for the values of z. Well, since this is our constraint for z, and since z depends on x and y, let's reduce the variables in this equation. x is given by 2 cosine of t, so we have x squared plus y squared, which is 2 sine of t quantity squared. That's the left side of the equal sign. The right side of the equal sign is given by x, which is 2 cosine of t, plus y, which is 2 sine of t, plus 2z. Our goal is to express z in terms of that single parameter t. What we get on the left is 4 cosine squared t plus sine squared t. And what we get on the right is 2 times cosine of t plus sine of t plus z. Well, let's divide both sides by 2. From trigonometry, we know that cosine squared t plus sine squared of t is equal to 1. So we could write the left side as 2 equals cosine of t plus sine of t plus z. So expressing z in terms of t means z as a function of t is equal to 2 minus cosine of t minus sine of t. So now we have our three components. We have our x component, we have our y component, we have our z component. Let's now express this. Our vector function describing the curve of intersection has the three components x, y, and z, and those components are 2 cosine of t for the x component, 2 sine of t for the y component, and 2 minus cosine of t minus sine of t for the z component. Now, this describes an ellipse in three-dimensional space. Now, you probably don't see how it's an ellipse because that z component is a trigonometric function of cosine and sine, but you could certainly see that the x and y components form a circle. That z component is going to cause the circle to oscillate up and down um, uh, symmetric about the point z equals 2. And when you look at our diagram from here, I think it's quite reasonable that we could say this is described by 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t, uh, and then 2 minus cosine of t minus sine of t. This is our equation of the curve of intersection.